Hello everyone, we just watched the vice presidential debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Walz so that you don't have to, you're welcome. You are the lucky ones. So lucky. Okay, let's start out with a few highlights from the debate. Uh, so first up, quick question, did Kamala Harris turn children into drug mules? Some of them have been used as drug trafficking mules. The real family separation policy in this country is unfortunately Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. Well, I don't know that we can say for sure whether or not uh, Kamala Harris did make children into drug mules, mm -hmm. but I can't say for sure that she will be considering it for the future. They both are, uh, Trump and Harris will be watching this debate, try and see what plays well with the audience. Very focused on that future. Uh, number two, uh, a war seems like it's just about to break out in the Middle East, if it hasn't already, and it kind of has. It um, has. And, and so I think we can all agree that the most relevant question on this debate stage tonight was, where exactly was Tim Walls during Tiananmen Square? Governor Walls, you said you were in Hong Kong during the deadly Tiananmen Square protests in the spring of 1989. But Minnesota Public Radio and other media outlets are reporting that you actually didn't travel to Asia until August of that year. Can you explain that discrepancy? All I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just, that's what I've said. So definitely he was during Tiananmen Square. He was nearby during somewhere when they, I don't, I don't know. No one can say. In Hong Kong, China, China, if you're voting Republican. Yeah. He was definitely thereabouts. a teacher. Thereabouts. That's not the important question, though, is it? Is it? Uh, no, it is. It is. Oh, it is. Damn it. On to the next highlight. Uh, so J.D. Vance seems to be pretty accepting of the fact that his kids might get shot at school. Look, I, I want to just sort of speak as a father of three beautiful little kids, and our, our oldest is now in second grade. And like a lot of parents, we send our kids to school with such hope and such joy and such pride at their little faces on the first day of school. And we know, unfortunately, that a lot of kids are going to experience this terrible epidemic of gun violence. It's just a fact of life now. Your children will be shot in school. I, for one, applaud J.D. Vance for just accepting reality and knowing that as a lawmaker, as somebody who is tasked with improving this country and making it better for all of us, he's given up. Yeah, I, I applaud him for just accepting the inevitable and not trying to do anything about it. Great job, J.D. Vance. Good work, buddy. Okay, so let's talk about abortion now. Extended section on this. Um, I thought Tim Waltz said something really interesting when he suggested that maybe women shouldn't have their rights determined by their geography? The fact of the matter is, how can we as a nation say that your life and your rights, as basic as the right to control your own body, is determined on geography? There's a very real chance, had Amber Thurman lived in Minnesota, she would be alive today. Interesting concept. I don't really understand how that's going to work. I mean, let's... Uh... Let's assume for a second you were a woman. Uh-huh. Right. And you wanted trying to uh, picture it. autonomy over your own health care decisions. Really trying to picture it. It's hard. Okay. It's hard. Now, let's also assume for a second you live in Texas. I, I ooh, again, that's another tough mm -hmm. one. All right. This is your fault. I thought it was the immigrants' fault. Uh, let me check my notes here. It's either they the, are responsible for housing costs. Okay. So if it's not the immigrants, it's Kamala Harris, right? Yes, it was Kamala Harris's many, many, my notes say, things she done did mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that have caused your, well, we're going to say rights, but we know it's not. <laughs> sure. Thank you for clearing that up. That was very helpful. I'm here for you. Um, As a man, it's my duty to explain <laughs> these things to you. <laughs> Uh, one thing that I thought was interesting was that Vance seemed to acknowledge that people do not agree with him on this issue and frequently on other issues. I know a lot of Americans don't agree uh, with everything that I've ever said on this topic. Of course, you don't have to agree with everything that President Trump has ever said or ever done. They don't agree with me and Donald Trump on every issue. I mean, he makes a good case, but I just don't agree with him. 
Yeah, it's hard to agree with someone so disagreeable. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting was when he said that the Republican Party needed to earn the trust back of people on uh, on the abortion issue. We've got to do so much better of a job at earning the American people's trust back on this issue where they frankly just don't trust us. We've got to do a better job at winning back people's trust. So many young women also see an unplanned pregnancy as something that's going to destroy their livelihood, destroy their education, destroy their relationships, and we have got to earn people's trust back. Austin, why do you think they might not have that trust? Wow. Uh, wow, that's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be, some might argue, because of the massive violations of trust uh, sure. on the abortion issue. Do you think it has anything to do with the whole women bleeding to death in parking lots of ERs? Is that maybe a factor? Uh, I don't see how that plays no. into it. You're right. No. You're right. You're right. No, that sounds like a state's rights issue you're talking about. Sure. Um, as we all know, states have the exclusive right to decide if women bleed to death in parking lots. That just makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one particularly spicy moment in this debate uh, was when J.D. Vance was asked about January 6th, uh, which he proceeded to answer openly. And oh, I'm just kidding. He, he dodged that question. <laughs> Take a look. It's fun. Well, look, Tim, uh, first of all, it's really rich for Democratic leaders to say that Donald Trump is a unique threat to democracy when he peacefully gave over power on January the 20th, as we have done for 250 years in this country. Wow. He uh, was slippery as an eel on that question, mm -hmm. did not answer any bit of it at all. What do you think about that answer? Well, I applaud him. This is actually the first time he's ever answered that question without saying what year. Uh, Truly, he's going on a new take. Uh, he's definitely appealing to more people now by just presuming that's part of it. <laughs> yeah. Great job, J.D. Vance. Great job. One thing that I noticed that was a recurring theme throughout the evening was whose fault is stuff? And there are two answers to that question. Mm -hmm. Number one, okay. it's Kamala Harris's fault. Yeah. Or if it's not her fault, uh -huh. it's the fault of immigrants. Kamala Harris led in fentanyl into our communities at record levels. The American citizens who have had their lives destroyed by Kamala Harris's open border, we do want to blame Kamala Harris for letting in millions of illegal aliens into this Pass country. Bill. Wow, succinct. That really gives me two specific people slash groups to focus my hate and rage on. I, I could vote on that sort of a platform. It's really a huge time saver if you can blame all of the problems in the entire country and indeed the entire world on either Kamala Harris mm -hmm. or immigrants. Uh, it, it's going to save you so much time. It's going to be like AI on steroids for you um, in terms of uh, your blaming people needs. See, Kamala Harris had three and a half years uh -huh. as VP sure. to solve all of the nation's problems. Right. And she failed to do that, yes. which is massive. Uh -huh. Whereas Donald Trump only had four years Ooh. as president yeah. to solve all of the world's problems, uh -huh. which is not enough time. No. Uh, and people should not expect that much from him. He's a businessman. No, business. Uh, and he was very business, bu busy businessing. So much business. Uh, really, um, I think that's also Kamala's fault. Is she an immigrant? Who can say? I think the important question is, where was she during Tiananmen Square? Oh my God, the question no one's asking. Uh, so to sum up this debate, uh, who do you think won this debate? Well, um, what's that drug that helps you go to sleep very Ambient. quickly? Yeah, not them. No. No, they no. are out of business tonight, no. folks. Woof. No, this was a big sleeper. Um, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I did fall asleep during the last little bit of this debate because it was boring as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I personally tried a cocktail of drugs to stay awake, mm -hmm. and that was way more entertaining the, than the debate. So I did right. not pay a ton of attention. I, I found the part where you were talking about the purple unicorns to be slightly distracting. Yeah, but on topic. I mean, I felt like the moderators were the subtext. Mm -hmm. was about the purple unicorns, and I, I wanted to be there for them. Mm, mm, mm. So mm. true. Yes. Um, Who did you think won the debate? 
Well, I think people like me who fell asleep during the last 20 minutes um, really did themselves a favor um, because they they missed some of the parts where um, they kept talking. Oh um, well, so you've had a long day, so that's a win for you. Long day. Um, I, I do want to say one thing that struck me about this debate, the part that I was conscious for, was um, how nice these two were to each other. Tim just said something that I agree with. Much of what the senator said right there, I'm in agreement with him on this. And I think that Governor Walz and I actually probably agree that we need to do better on this. I agree with a lot of what Senator Vance said about what's happening. Is this what a functioning government looks like? Because if so, I am appalled. It's disgusting. Oh. I mean, throw a friggin' chair, for God's sakes. This is the future of the country. Exactly, exactly. Everybody knows that when you're in a presidential debate or a vice presidential debate, you have to be a giant dick. That's what Donald Trump has taught us. And these guys just totally missed the mark on that. Way to screw it up, losers. Anyways, those are the highlights from the debate. Uh, please let us know if you saw any other spicy moments in the comments. And by spicy, we mean slathered in mayonnaise because nothing about this was spicy. It was uh, serene, if anything. Um, but if you saw another moment that really jumped out at you, tell us about it in the comments. Hope you enjoyed not watching the debate and watching this instead. It's much shorter, so there's that. And uh, yeah, everybody, take care out there. Have a good one. And remember, watch the show because the debate was, wasn't, but we will remain spicier than a Minnesota hot dish.